Good evening, everyone. It's Shelley Johns here from Gimpy, and I just wanted to welcome you on our Monday night call. Where absolutely, everyone's welcome. So you've got team members that are looking for that support <coughs> and um, learning from some of the top people in the company with, that have got you know 25 years plus experience. This is the call to be on. So make sure you spread the word, share the link, and, and get it out there. So um, tonight's topic is all about the art of promotion, but we always kick off our evening with some good news, and there's plenty to share, which is fantastic. So I'll just click through. Oh, there you are, Lindy. So, Lindy, would you like to share um, where you're from and what your good news is? Yeah, hi, I'm Lindy and I'm from Canberra. Um, I've got a few this week. Um, I love my Star Trek bloke when he comes and makes my deliveries and it's always very exciting because I know I'm getting all the wonderful products. Um, but this week he particularly stopped and asked if he could have a booklet to look through things before he delivered things at the end of the week. So... And he's a sweetheart, so I'm looking forward to him doing the delivery at the end of the week and chatting. Um, and then um, I was had to get an advert into one of the universities to get a carer at home. And when I was there, um, I just chatted to this woman, uh, you know, had my badge on, started talking to this woman, just casual conversation. And um, and she said, oh, I, I did Herbalife about 10 years ago. And so then we got chatting and she had a lot of health issues, so we're now going to start doing a walking um, club. She's only, oddly enough, only about half a block away from me, so that's really nice. So we're going to start doing that once a week, maybe twice, because she's got some issues. And then she said we can walk and talk about things from there. And then, of course, the best thing was that um, because I've got a couple of members in the Philippines, I'll be going to the Spectacular in Manila before going to Adelaide. So it's all happening. Wow, that's very exciting. We can't wait to see the photos of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> no problem. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Linda. You're doing fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. It feels um, great. It's happening. <laughs> now let's go looking for Mervyn. Where is he? So Mervyn, would you like to share where you're from and what your good news is for the week? I'm from Canberra, same as Lindy. We meet together quite up every fortnight as a HOM. But um, this week I had... Uh, person ring me up, he came out of Yellow Pages, I believe, and he brought two ultimate programs. So I'll be talking to him again shortly. Right, and you know, just from the previous calls, you know, now you can package your income story um, uh, for that, you know, for that week or day, you know, you can use it at, at, at what's happened that day, what's happened that week, what's happened that month, so that you can share that income story and attract people into your business that way as well. And a, a great tip, Mervyn just said, the white pages and yellow pages, make sure you check them out. Um, often um, white pages will give you a free listing um, as a Herbalife um, distributor, so make sure you, you um, follow up on that if you can because it's like free business. So, um, and obviously there's the online option if you've missed the book. So the books I think is online. So thank you, Mervyn, that's fantastic. It looks like these um, people from Canberra are just going for it. We need to lift our game, Queenslanders. <laughs> yeah. So um, well now we've got Irene. So would you like to share where you're from and what's been um, happening this week for you? I'm from Perugia Beach now, and uh, this week, if, if you know, I've been keeping in touch with clients that have bought products from me over the years, and I just want to send them text messages if I didn't want them to feel you were forgotten. And this week, I got a phone call or a text message, I should say, from a long-standing client. She desperately needed help. She tried to lose her weight on her own; it didn't succeed. And I just realized the power of follow-up. You know, keeping in touch. You never know when they will turn back and they'll want help again. And that's what I was so excited, and she is too. She started yesterday. I've got all the details. So um, definitely we'll have some good stories coming from her. She's very dedicated. That's fantastic. Thank you, Irene. That's awesome. Great news. So, so much good news happening all around Australia. So let's go looking for our next person. I'm trying to find... Oh, there you are. Uh, Carol, um, would you like to share where you're from and what your good news is for the week? From Deception Bay, and I had I've done a few markets at Deception Bay Shopping Centre, and a lady contacted me the other day out of the blue, wasn't expected it, and wanted to start now. And so I've got her on a program, and uh, before I could do my follow up. She rang me so with questions and, and things like that. So we had a good chat yesterday. 
And also, um, I've got a clients that have been with me for three, oh, about three months, have come, elderly couple, which is unusual, to come to the SCS and they're tickled pink. Um, I've also had a, a messenger through Facebook from a vet uh, requesting to share my photo, which I was quite stunned. And then she put in there a photo that uh, someone in Western Australia is sharing my photo before and after photo and and that. So I was quite stoked and I shared that with my doctor today and he was, we just chatted on her block and he is so proud of me and, and well, I, I walked out with the biggest smile on my face. So you don't often walk out of a doctor's place with a big smile on your face. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Carol. It's, um, we're really happy for you. You're doing a fantastic job. Just keep going. And, and look, there's so much more good news all, all in this whole group and it's growing all the time. I can feel the momentum building. I uh, just thought I would share um, just for this week. So at Fit Club today, I had the... Final challenge results, which I'm yet to post, but I will. It wasn't a big challenge group. I, I mean, I've got a lot of clients and not all of them jump on on the challenge, but sometimes the challenge is fun and I give everyone a prize just because I feel like they're all doing working on their own goals. Um, so I got to recognise some of the people you know, on the challenge at Fit Club and give them their prizes there. Um, one of the uh, girls, Jackie, who was just down the street, she came off a flyer and started to come to Fit Club, jumped on a trial pack, upgraded, uh, she's just uh, VIPing, which is great. And she's got a friend to VIP underneath her. So that's really cool. Um, one of my old friends um, who used to be on her block ages ago, she's uh, got back on the products and she's going, um, got her member pack. So I'm going to help her with the registration because she did the old fashioned form, but because it's um, duplicate, she's made some mistakes and then wired it out. And then we just decided that we'll just go and do it online <laughs> and because it's much easier. Doing it that way. I got a button hit today because um, I went out and did walking and talking. You would have seen my daily schedule or weekly schedule that I've written out and colour coded, which I kind of need to do for me because I'm quite visual. And and I know it might look a little bit daunting, um, but what I've done is I've allowed time to have everything and have some balance as well, family time. Obviously, I have the girls every second week. So the week I don't have the girls, there's some pockets of time that I might go and do flyers or something like that. Um, but there's very structured family time. So um, walking and talking was today after Fit Club. So I came home, had a shower, got dressed, went back out again. And you know what? It's very easy when you get home after going to Fit Club not to go back out again. <laughs> so I just want to explain that if you've set some things, task for yourself, just try and find someone to be accountable to and just get out there. And I got a button hit. Uh, someone that had been on her block years ago, she goes, oh, but I'm in Brisbane. I said, oh, that's no problem. I can help you wherever you are. How long are you here for? And um, she's going to come and meet up with me this week. And also someone that is a referral of a referral for a wellness evaluation. Um, she came back to get her results done. She's lost 10 and a half centimetres and uh, she's starting on a trial pack on um, Wednesday, which is really cool. So that's some good news. So there's lots of things happening. And, you know, if you feel like not much is happening in your business, don't worry. Just get started with some activities and just keep going. And if you're not sure about the method you're doing, you know, talk to your sponsor mentors on the things that are working and just start doing something because it will build. But if you stop and start all the time or you never get started, um, it's not going to happen. So we really want you to get into action and, and we want you to share your good news. So, um, Jan, did you have anything you wanted to share on that? No, that's fine, Shirley. Yeah. Okay, so cool. So tonight's topic, the art of promotion. I was just saying, Jan, before you jumped on, when I did the slides on Be Funky, um, the picture looks really clear when you're doing it, but when you put it onto the presentation, it's tiny and you had to expand it and it went blurry. So I apologise for the blurriness and just to put, let you know, disclaimer, it's not your eyes. <laughs> it's <laughs> <the lines. laughs> just letting you know. So let's get on with this. I know this is a really big one that we've always taught and Gary was huge on promoting everything and he was such a great promoter, so, like his enthusiasm and excitement for everything. Like I, I remember sometimes you know, calling him and going, oh, I'm really trying for my 5,000 is like, you know, the 28th of the month. And he'd go, you're going to hit 10,000 for sure. <laughs> you know, he'd just like be way bigger than what I'd be thinking. But I always appreciated that he did that. He made, he made you expand to, to more than what you could be. And he saw it. He saw that in all of us. So uh, it's something that I always take with me. 
So let's just get on with a checklist on what we're going to cover tonight. And definitely, um, if anyone wants to add as we go along, I'm trying to find the arrows, it's white on white. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the art of promotion. We're going to um, cover knowing your promotion. So it's really important that you know what promotions are out there. Okay, and if you've got an event coming up, making sure that you're setting up your own local event. So you want to print out any of the promotions that Herbalife has on, and there's lots at the moment. So print them out and put them up so you can see them. Uh, have them in plain view, somewhere you can see them all the time. And it's a constant reminder, reminding you, and, and it's that thing that um, Jan always talks about with, um, with uh, you know, visualisation. Always make sure it's there in your site. Set up your own local events. If you don't look, I've had to set up ones here in Gibby because there wasn't anything here. So you, sometimes you have to do your own and sometimes you can plug into what's already there. If the stuff already there, go for that. But if you don't, you need to start thinking about doing your own Herb Life Opportunity Meeting, your own Fit Club or Walking Group, Weight Loss Challenges, etc. cetera, uh, in your own local area. You need to create that community for people to plug into, okay? Then you need to build on your belief. And that's working on yourself with your personal development. Don't prejudge that you think you can or can't do it. Just go for it because you will grow and your business will grow anyway. The visualization, which I'm going to cover in a minute. I know Jan's amazing at this. She's like the master of visualization on seeing yourself already doing it. This is a really important step. Don't, don't discount this one. Uh, working on your attitude when you're talking to people, getting into action because you have, without action, nothing's going to happen. And then knowing your numbers, being realistic, having those realistic expectations of what effort you do and what you're going to get back. Okay, so these are some of the things we're going to cover tonight. Um, Jan, did you have any um, things you'd like to add? Uh, no, you've covered everything and we'll probably uh, discuss a few things as probably. we go along. I just had to flex through the slides. Okay, so the art of promotion. So this is, this is how um, your event is divided up. You've got the pre-event, so before your event, the actual event when it's happening, and your post-event after the event. These are the sections. So first one is pre-event, leading up to your event. And you might choose, depending on what sort of event, you can see something like a spectacular and those kind of bigger events are promoted many, many months before, like even 90 days before, which is fine. Um, so, but with say a local event, you might be doing um, a kickoff or you might be doing um, a hail or something like that, whatever it might be. Uh, one month before is plenty of time, particularly the two weeks um, before is where you really need to focus in on the one week before. So sometimes you'll be promoting and then you'll kind of take your foot off the pedal, but this is when you really need to pour it on for the week before. And the one or two days before is when you're really following up on the people that said they were going to come and staying in touch with them, doing some last minute posts or messaging just to let people know it's still on and you know you want to see them there, what they need to bring and that sort of thing. Okay, so you really need to advertise your event. You need to invite as many people as you can uh, and don't prejudge, just invite everyone. And then you want to follow up on um, the people that said they were coming and to continually promote. Okay, so let's just go through. I've got a few... Um, things on invitations are coming up. So the event. So this is when your event's actually happening and you want to create a lot of energy. So you're, you're the person that's driving the, the energy in the place. So if your finding's a bit low, it's up to you to lift that energy up. And sometimes it's hard if you're the only person there doing it to start with, but then you'll get people on board that will help create that energy. So Gary always called it creating the sizzle. This is the, yeah, when you're at the event. So you want to be taking photos or maybe doing some live videos, which can be a little bit daunting at the start, but uh, it's great because it's all happening then and there. Um, you want to create that fear of loss, like, oh, you should have been there. I wish you were here. <laughs> and, and then you want to be able to say to people, let's help you get there, get here next time. Sorry, I haven't spelled here properly. Um, here next time. So, you you know, like um, Jim Ryan said, it's not go do it. It's like, let's go do it. Let's lock arms and go and do that. So the event outcome, so to say if you're going to a Herbalife event, maybe have a goal of meeting three new people. You've, you've heard this before. Uh, get out of your comfort zone and do a bit of networking and start collecting stories, which someone's just done with Coral. They've collected her story because they want to share it and they've followed up on it. And then maybe take three things from the event that you can action right away because sometimes you'll get a whole bunch of information. You go, oh, you know, what am I going to do with all this? But just maybe select three things that you can put into action as quickly as possible, okay? 
So, and then the second part is after the event. So this is something we've heard a lot from, especially Gary, getting into action, you've got that 72 hours. So most of the excitement, you say you go away overseas or you go to the STS or something like that, really you've only got that 72 hour period where you've got the most excitement, enthusiasm until then, you know, you get back into your daily routine and you're on some people maybe that are a bit negative. You want to use that maximum excitement from the event to propel your business forward. You, know, you, you want that to rub off on people that are going, wow, this person's so pumped or you know, they, they're so positive and it's really attractive when we're feeling up and positive and, and um, you know, we've got all that energy and enthusiasm from it, um, people are drawn to that. So you really want to paint the picture of what, what you heard and saw there. Remember they always say you're going to hear things that you've never heard and you're going to see things that you've never seen. You need to be able to portray that to people and show them and tell them through stories and um, pictures and things like that and then you're giving them all the latest news and so that they wish that they were there as well okay so um, so that's the, the three parts pre-event before the event and then after the event so um, Jan did you have anything to share uh, just on the advertising just make sure when you are promoting that uh, it's very clear where and when uh, and if there's like any cost involved, then it's very clear for the newer person to be able to find that information. Recently, there was a meeting up here on the Gold Coast and took ages to find out where it was going to be. Um, so, you know, just make sure that those very important details are very clear and upfront um, and, as, you know, everywhere the people can sort of find it very easily. Oh, and I think that's why I love the Facebook events because they make you put all, <laughs> you've got the time, you've got the date, you've got the location, you can tag it in on there. So it's good because it actually forces you to, to put that information. Whereas if you're just doing a flyer and maybe emailing it or something like that, it's, it's very easy. easy. Yeah, it's very easy to miss sometimes those important things like a cost or, or what to bring or the address. <laughs> so thank you, Jane. That's a really good point. I think also, so, and uh, one thing to remember that at the post event, you also are promoting the next event. So you make sure that you, you know, that was, that's part of the post event saying, you missed it now, but this is coming up and you need to always have that as part of your, of your post event as well. And, yes. and um, the next thing is. I think you're right too, because Herbalife does that so well. You're at the, at the event, then guess what's being promoted? The next thing coming up, which is great. And Gary always said, didn't he, that's the next event, whether it's your local HOM, sorry, Herb Life Opportunity Meeting, Dan, or um, yeah, whatever's coming up, that next event is the one you should be promoting and getting people to. Yep. So, um, so here's uh, just a few other things from post event as well, getting into action after your event. So follow up equals fortune. So make sure you follow up on the people that were there. Thank them for coming. Uh, get a decision if some people were there to come and look at the business or the products, get them started and ask for referrals. So you, you don't want to do all that work to have the event and then you miss the part at the afterwards because sometimes it's really busy in an event. You're not going to be able to do everything there because you might be running it and doing other things. So you need to make sure. That's why I like having a sign-in book where guests sign in so that you can follow up, especially if you've got people that have come for other um uh, coaches that maybe might not be there so that you can also refer them back and do the, all those things as well so you definitely want to make sure after your event you're following up on the people that were there so how to promote your business so um, this ties in with um, what uh, Jan was saying making sure you've got all the correct information you want to cover all the bases so all the methods are basically like a, a, a menu but I would try and do everything and Inviting people face to face and calling them personally works best because it's personal and it has the best strike rate. Then you can create a Facebook event. Uh, when it comes to inviting Facebook friends, um, I don't generally invite other people's clients and team members, and um, generally I would ask their, their um, sponsor first before I would do that, or I would um, let them become a, a host of that event. Um, so that they can invite their people as well. So there's a few ways of working around that. Um, you can uh, you post on your timeline, your Facebook timeline, ask your friends to share it on their timeline, put out flyers, posters, ads, emailing, texting, and in Messenger, but don't bulk message. It's one, definitely one of my pet hates is um, sending out a bulk message, which is not personal at all. It's really important, especially with social media, that you keep it as personal as possible. It doesn't take much to cut and paste a message and then just put their name, type their name up the top. 
just like an email, same thing. Um, so try and personalize it as much as possible because again, you're putting all this effort in. You want to make sure every single thing you do is going to get the best possible outcome. So, so who to invite? Again, don't prejudge, invite everybody. Start with center of influence, which is people you know. You can definitely go through your phone contacts list. It's a great memory jogger. Any of your email lists and things like that. Your Facebook friends, again, checking that you're um, going through your friends, not maybe uh, friends of other um, distributors and things like that. Just try and make sure we keep those ethics there. Um, but yeah, just, you know, you can do, like I said, fly drops and invite your neighbours and things like that as well. But always start with Centre of Influence and then ask them who do they know that, that can come along as well. Um, so Jan or Irene, did you have anything to add to that? No, uh, that, that's, that's fine. Just uh, obviously if you've got uh, members or distributors in your team, obviously you need to work with those people to find out who they know and sort of go downline further. Yes. And because, yeah, sometimes it's easy to presume that everyone's doing what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but don't presume that because sometimes people are scared or they're not sure or they're nervous um, and their fear will stop them in their tracks. And so it's your job as their coach, even if you're scared too, <laughs> is to step yeah. up and just do it with them, lock arms and go, hey, let's, let's go and call people together or let's just do some practice calls, ask some friends if you can practice inviting or whatever you've got to do just to start getting them into action and show them what to do by example. So good point, thank you. Um, so knowing your numbers. So this is the work that I said about having those realistic expectations because sometimes, you know, I've, I've said to people, oh, how many people did you invite? And said, oh, I'm, I did a Facebook event and I invited like 200 people. And, you know, it's not real. Adding people to a Facebook event is very different to going out and face-to-face. -face. So am I going, hi, Irene, I'm having a shake party next Saturday. Um, I'd love you to come. We're going to try some fantastic recipes. Um, do you think you might be able to come on Saturday at 10 a.m.? I would indeed. <laughs> so, hey, do you, do, would you have a friend that you would like to bring along? Oh, I have, yes. Oh, so, you know, that, that personal thing, that face-to-face -face and, and seeing what their voice is like, you're going to know whether they're interested or not just by the, the tone of their voice and everything like that. So if you invite enough like that, so I mean personally inviting, 40 people, the strike rate would be one in four on average. Will you get more, more sometimes? Yes. Will you get less sometimes? Yes. But on average, it's one in four will show. So again, the more, you know, if you can invite more than 40, that's fantastic. Um, so this will give you approximately 10 people if you're inviting 40 personally. So the personal invitations work best. Ask them to bring a friend like I just asked Irene to do. Keep promoting right up until the event. Just remember, sometimes you'll get all enthusiastic two weeks before and then also in the last few days you're busy you know organizing event and you forget so you need to keep your your you know finger on the pulse and keep promoting it and enroll other people to help you do it as well if you're not you know if you're finding it hard to find content or something fresh you know you can interview someone or get someone else to do a video for you so there's lots of different things you can give incentives for people to bring people lucky door prizes and that I think are really great um, so this is a way of of trying to um, be realistic on on how many people you think are going to show. So, did you have anything to add to that, Irene or Jen? No, that's fine for me. Yeah, for my, for me too. Perfect. Excellent. So, attitude. So, this is a really big one too because you might really have something coming up, but if you're, you know, feeling scared or nervous, or maybe you're just someone that's quite shy. I know Jan, you're, you're very much like me. I was. But, you know, I wouldn't have been talking like this in front of you guys on this call even uh, because I was really shy and I found talking to people extremely difficult, even though some people don't believe that. It's true. <laughs> yeah, Darth Merv one day, what I was like. And um, you need to work on your attitude and do your personal development. So, um, you know, Jim Rowan always says, you can skip a meal, but don't skip a book. So make sure you're doing, you know, half an hour of personal development each day reading up on how to be a better presenter or how to you know speak better or there's lots of so many books out there there's you know how to win friends and influence people or there's there's heaps and remember we communicate with feelings so it's really important that you work on yourself every day you want a rock solid attitude that nothing can shake it doesn't matter if someone says oh what do you want to do that stupid thing for you're not going to care because you know where you're going and you know what help how you believe and you and you're truly 
you know, passionate about what you're doing and nobody can shake that, okay? It's really important. So, so this is why personal development is so, so important. It's easy to do, easy not to do. So very easy not to do personal development, but it's something I, I promise if you work on it every single day, it will help you um, to become more attractive. You know, be someone people are attracted to. Develop that set of words that you can share with people that's going to inspire them and inspire people to take action, most importantly. You want to enroll people into your mission and you want to deliver your message with passion, okay? And when you do that, and it just takes practice, um, and you know, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, so I know, Jen, you, you did this is from personal experience, coming from someone who's very shy, um, like working on your attitude and doing personal development, how important is that? Oh, absolutely, in, in, you know, imperative that you do do it because otherwise you, you stand still. So just reading and listening and, and watching, you know, as much as you possibly can uh, does definitely help. And I do believe wholeheartedly that Herbalife has the ability of bringing out a lot of skills and abilities that we don't even know we've got. And you can put it into action for yourself and not a boss, which I think is very important. But Herbalife does definitely help develop you if you let yourself um, become open and listen to what, you know, our peers are telling us. Oh, well, thank you. So, that, yes, that's right. So we're watching, our, especially if you're watching someone that you that's doing what you want to do, it's, it's, it's like a map to follow. You just have to copy what they're doing. And it's like modeling somebody else. So, you know, just look at what's working because it's in our best interest for you to be successful. Okay, so uh, we, we want you to do well. Um, Irene, I know when you first got involved in the business, you weren't really, you know, you weren't really enthusiastic about it, were you? So how, how, did, how did you work on your attitude for that? I, I think the first thing is that if your need uh, is greater than your fear, your need will prepare you to do whatever is necessary. And that was very much for us. Our, my need was greater. And the other thing was that I was actually Khan who wasn't enthusiastic. Oh, sorry, sorry. I got that wrong. It doesn't matter. If not, not a, but what, what, was, what was interesting was I didn't, you know, I, I knew we needed, but I, I didn't really have uh, any idea how to go about it. And I, I will never forget, I, I thought to myself, well, I know how to shop. So I took contact with me to Mossman shopping <laughs> and I gave out some flyers. And that was uh, probably my first introduction to doing something with Herbalife other than using the products and having great results and referring people. So if your need is greater than your, greater than your fear, you will do anything in life, no matter what it is. And mine was. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That's great. Sorry that I got that story wrong. I won't get it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the whole story when I come up to Gimpy. <laughs> <That'd be> lovely. <laughs> I remember when, Con when Conrad and uh, Irene came into the office for the first couple of times, Con was very stern. <laughs> oh, I'm stood with his arms crossed. <laughs> oh, but you know what? His need was greater than his yeah. <laughs> and personal development and it, it was probably one of the best things that we that we got at the beginning and we followed we would never have achieved without that I believe That's and amazing. I had a changed man it's amazing so personal development is amazing and this next one which is Jan's favorite thing and you know I talk about it so much um, because it's something I always found difficult and I've been really working on this, Jan. You'll be <laughs> happy to hear that I've been spending time visualising uh, things because uh, I'm reading um, Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins and he talks a lot about doing it. And uh, the thing that I love about it, so obviously it's the law of attraction and visualising something, seeing yourself already achieving your goal or being at that event or whatever it is and you want to spend at least five to ten minutes a day uh, each day visualizing what you want to set out to achieve like it's already happened you know see yourself qualifying attending see your event that you're hosting being successful and, and lots of people in the room and the, the things to add to that is you can see it you can hear it you can feel it you can smell it Any, anything extra that you can add on to that um, will actually make the visual visualization more powerful so say if you're at um, a Herbalife event at the Spectacular and, you've got, and you're at the party, I remember Daniel saying about, um, did you want to share that um, you know, dance, on the dance floor one? What, what was that oh, one? 
a good few years ago, yes, I, I used to watch videos we had in those days of all the beautiful events that Herbalife used to have, all the parties and things. And when we qualified to be in air team, we went to Hawaii and I visualised, you know, going to the party and I visualised being on the dance floor and all that sort of thing and Mark Hughes being there and lo and behold, it was like deja vu. We were on the dance floor, uh, were dancing and next to us was Mark Hughes and his uh, current wife, Susan, I think, her name was then, um, you know, so it was just like it had happened before and it was so real. So visualising, even sort of visualise what you're going to wear if it is a special event, um, it does really, really help in law of attraction. It all comes together. Absolutely. So if you're on the dance floor, you know, you can see you know, everyone around you dancing, you can hear the music, you can feel the material of your dress that you're wearing and you can smell the frangipanis in the vases all around the room or something like that so you want to add all those elements in because it actually makes your the visualization more powerful as well so it's something um like when i first started doing it i found it difficult because my mind would just kind of get distracted and just go off somewhere else and i'd have to bring it back again and think about what it was and i think adding in those other elements because you might find it easier to do one of these elements the smell the how it feels or what it sounds like and the seeing, you know, one of these might be easier for you to do to begin with. So just start and just keep adding to it. So this is really, really important for anything that's coming up, like the summit, uh, the spectacular, the extravaganza next year, uh, any of the things, the vacation, you know, to Vietnam, you might want to, um, yeah, look up some things, Google and look up on YouTube, all the different things to do with Vietnam and really see yourself there. So these are all the things that you can spend time visualising and uh, it's part of your personal development. So just add it in. Most people can just add in five minutes, you know, instead of scrolling through Facebook or doing something else, yes. spend that on you. This is an investment in you. So um, this is really part of the art of promotion is um, teaching people how to see themselves already there and painting that picture for them and believing in them and showing the way. And the best way to do that is to do it yourself. Okay, that's the best leader, that's the person that is already doing it. So um, did you have anything else to add to that, Jen? No, that's perfect. Shelley, you've done well there. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm big on it because you've, you've talked so much about it. You've really inspired me. <laughs> is it getting easier? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm visual anyway, but I was just, my mind was getting distracted. So um, this is really great. Uh, Lindy's going to relate to this one because... Uh, obviously, the art of promotion too is is thinking about developing international business. Like we work local and we think global. So you want to also find out about events and things that are going on worldwide, um, and ask who do you know in whatever country because we're in 96 plus countries worldwide. So if you're like, for example, Lindy's prime example, she's got some people she knows in the Philippines, and so she can start asking now. If she knows she's going to the Philippines in February. Who do you know in the Philippines? And you could set up. Um, you know, an event or some get-togethers there and expand your international business because you really want to de develop a business that is working for you 24 hours a day. And I know um, Irene and Jan and Rosemary have got international business. I'm probably many more on the call as well. It, it, it's having an international business means that you're earning money while you sleep. So who wants a business like that? Yes, thank you. I need to put your hand up, Coral. <laughs> I'm sure there's many more hands up as well. So that's the sort of business we, we want to develop. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> so I just want you to think about that, that yes, we're working here locally in our local areas and towns, but I want you to think bigger. I want you to think globally and develop that international business where you're earning royalty income 24 hours a day. That's what um, the goal is. And everyone has the opportunity to do that. So just to cap it off, so we're on our last slide coming, or second last slide. Um, so just the events and promotions coming up. So I just want you to um, make sure you know when all your local events on, because obviously that's we're from all over Australia here on the call, uh, knowing what's going on in your local area. But also if you've got people and team members in other areas, make sure they know where their local events are as well and how to plug into those. And again, if you don't have any, don't worry, just start creating them. You know, there's plenty of, PowerPoint presentations with Herbalife Opportunity Meetings. You can do a shake party. You can just start walking with a bunch of people and serve shakes at the end, do a weight loss challenge. You know, there's a whole bunch of things you can do in your local area that you can start inviting people into. And that's really, really the key, okay? 
Uh, when your local STSs and kickoffs and things like that are, there's plenty of websites and Facebook pages to access that. So uh, the summit coming up in November, uh, the Adelaide Spectacular uh, in February next year, plus of course Extravaganza, which is generally about May, and then the vacation in Vietnam. And, and yes, you've got to be a supervisor to start qualifying for that, but everyone has the opportunity to do that. And if there was ever a time to be a supervisor, this is the time to do it. And just a reminder that the Christmas catalogue is out and use those promotions to help reward your clients and give them more than what they expect to get as well. So, or it's a great way to, to give some incentive to get started because they're going to get an extra bonus. Now, people will do so much even for 10%. Look in shops and things, people go crazy for, for so many things. You know, we're, we're, we offer so much more value because they get uh, our service and our care at the same time. So, you know, you just don't get that anywhere else, <laughs> just so you know. Um, Mervyn, I'm sorry, I just realized you had your hand up. Did you have something to share? I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I just saw that you had it up. It was just a question, Shelley. Um, sure. You're saying about videos. Um, in New South Wales, we don't allow videos at the STSs. Yeah, so STS is a no recording, but if you're outside and you're just doing a little, oh, yeah. hey, here I am at the STS and I'm really excited, um, you could you could do that. As like, long as it's in Herbalife's guidelines, but yes, definitely no recording inside, which is, is quite... Um, that way, yeah. So make sure you um, you're not videoing in the actual SDS or spectacular, but you could do your little one where you're outside or you're all in the car going together, carpooling, and just make it fun and exciting. Or it just might be um, in your local area as well. So thank you for bringing that to our attention, Mervyn. That's awesome. Uh, so my last slide that I did up, I just thought was really cute because it's a bit about you know sowing the seeds and the things that you can do. Um, so and just imagine that when you're promoting something, it's like you know, a tiny drop in the ocean or a little seed like this, I call them fairies, but I can't remember what they are, but the fairies and you blow on them and the seeds go everywhere. You're just, you know, making the seeds go out. You don't know where they're going to land uh, and then they will start to grow and sprout and then you're going to turn into this amazing field of sunflowers. Imagine having a whole team like that um, just because you started with these tiny little seeds and you have to have that faith and you've got to be consistent. Um, Next week's call, I'm just going to give you the, the topic for next week, just so you know. And I want you to think about your good news for next week too, because we want as many people sharing the good news as possible. So our call for next week is on personal development and attitude. So uh, I'm going to be using some of your um, things that you sent through, Jan. Mm -hmm. Looking for you. Um, so I just thought that would be great. You know, there was some fantastic stuff there from Gary. So I thought we'd incorporate that into next week's call. So it's all on personal development and attitude. Uh, I've got some really great stuff to share. Uh, and then I'm hoping that maybe um, Irene and Con might share their story the week after that if um, if it's suitable for you. And I'll have a Con goes in for another operation tomorrow. Okay, so I'll have a chat to you. And, and we can all we can always shuffle that around. That's no problems at all. Um, so, was there anything that anyone would like to add before we wrap it up? Jen, um, Irene, or anyone else that's on the call? Just to remind everybody about the Queensland promotion for September, October, November. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we have a recruiting and a volume uh, promotion. Um, so, I put the flyer up on the call last week, uh, and also um, I've also put it in Challenge Yourself Daily too. If you go into the file section, it'll be sitting in there. And that's um, uh, where they were going to recognise uh, the top recruiters and volume producers in Queensland over the September, October and November. So you've still got plenty of time. You've got all of this month and you've got all of next month. That's correct, isn't it, Jam? Yeah, correct. So you're going to have some fantastic recognition and it's for everyone in Queensland from, you know, right up in Cairns all the way down to Tweed Heads. <laughs> Is that Tweed Heads in New South Wales or Queensland? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, on the border there. <laughs> I'm sure I just got that wrong, but that's okay. Um, so I just wanted to thank you. Yeah, Colin Gala, thank you. <laughs> How could I get that wrong? Um, so I just wanted to thank everyone for being on the call and for always sharing your good news and your great attitudes and enthusiasm. I really do appreciate it. Um, mm. because, yeah, because it takes each of us for all of us to succeed. We're all part of the same team. We're all in Mark Hughes's organisation. So we're all going to lock arms and we're going to really make a difference and change the world and one person at a time, okay? Yep. Yep. So I'm going to uh, finish recording. Hang on two seconds.
you know, stop sharing so we can see you all. There you all are. <laughs> So cool. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate all your support. So stay tuned for next week. The recording will go out. So make sure you share it with everybody. And um, I look forward to um, hearing your good news next week. Thanks, Shelley. Bye. 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 Bye.